Hey everyone, it's Hannah and welcome back to episode 95 of the Corner of Craft podcast. Hello, I hope that you are well. We are edging ever closer to episode 100 and yeah, that's bonkers. After the hiatus that I took last last month, I was umming and ahhing about whether to bring back the podcast and I'm comfortable with my decision, so it's back. As is my knitting mojo, my knitting mojo is back with a vengeance, so that is very exciting. Uh, if you are new, hello, my name is Hannah. I am a small business owner. I own the Corner of Craft. I dye yarn in colours inspired by Dungeons and Dragons under the name Chromatic Yarns. And uh, I make hand beaded stitch markers. It's a good time. This is a knitting and crochet podcast in which I talk about the projects that I have been working on, am working on, and will be working on, along with yarn in the background having a jolly old time. I am coming at you today from a, a little bit overcast but ultimately blue skied Nottingham here in the middle of England, the UK, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're embracing the lipstick again today. I want to, I, I want it to start looking normal on me, but I don't know if this lipstick is it because I just took a swig of my tea and this is what we have going on. To the tea today, for those who are curious, is um, Bird and Blend Monkey Chops, one of my favourite, if you like bananas. It's delicious. I think I'm just gonna have to deal with it and make sure that I'm not getting it around my face whenever I'm taking a swig. It's not lasting, this is not lasting all day anyway. I've got some finished objects. I've been on such a sock kick lately I don't know what is going on with me, but I'm embracing it. I've just been about knitting all of the socks. It's either that or all the socks that I were knitting just kind of finished at around the same time. So we have a lot of finished socks. We've got a new sock that I've cast on. We've got a new jumper that I've cast on. And it's just, it's all very exciting. Before I jump into it, if there's anything that you think, oh, I missed that point that she made. Oh, she mumbled through that. I don't know what she said. I have podcast notes. The link is in the description box below and I'll put it in a pinned comment as well. And uh, yeah, I take my time. I link everything off of Ravelry. So um, I usually link to people's Instagram so that you can find where you're going from there because a lot of people have links in their bio or I do their web shop if it's the yarn in particular. And um, yeah, so I have podcast notes. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, that would be delightful description box, there's a lot of stuff down there. But if you find that you are enjoying this, it would be lovely if you were to subscribe. It would be great to have you stick around. Uh, this is a monthly podcast, but I do try and post at least one video a month. And then if you um, want to subscribe to my Patreon, you get an extra video a month, just, just to let you know. But I would just want to place an apology for lack of videos for the past two weeks. I don't know what's happened. That's a lie, I do know what's happened. <sighs> The week before last, I was prepping for the shop update and uh, time got away from me and I didn't have time. And then um, you bought almost everything in my shop. I mean, there's still a few bits left, but you bought almost everything in my shop, thank you so much. And then I had to pack it all and then I went away for a few days and so I didn't have time because I had to pack 125 orders. And then people placed orders while I was away and then more were, more more was packaged when I got back. It's it's madness and now the yarn club's out and everything's happening. But that's where, that is where I have been for the last two weeks. I've not been doing nothing, I've been busy. I went to visit my parents on the south coast. Um, sunshine, the seaside, it's a lovely, lovely time. And then, yeah, back to work now, back to normality. There's so many bank holidays in this month. I don't know if I'm coming or going, but once again, it doesn't affect us too much because neither my husband nor I have like a normal job that is are are affected by bank holidays other than he had a market last Monday. So yeah, shall we get into some finished objects? Shall we start with this one? I know I counted it as an FO last time. I know this, but it's blocked now. And all the ends are woven in and trimmed off. I've only just blocked it, so I haven't worn it yet, and I've, that's the back. I've lost track of what's the back and what's the front. I'm pretty sure this is the back. I think that's the back. I need to put a label in it, I think. But this is my love note. I'll only briefly talk about it, because as I said, I did include it in FOs last time. Uh, I've just got it off the blocking mats just now. I use soak to block my knits, because in the fig smell, is it fig? Fig and lychee or something? Oh, it's delicious. It smells so good. This is the Love Note sweater. This is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. 
it's a lovely lace weight, no, lace yoke, there we go, jumper knit out of the Fibre Fox, we're all mad here on their fingering merino sock, I believe is what the base is called, 75 to 25 superwash merino nylon, I believe Georgie and Ben are changing all of their base, or have already changed their bases away from this particular blend, onto a new one but it's still delightful uh, but yes this is we're all mad here and then I held it together with some teal that I dyed um, and yeah I have loads of the yarn left so I need to figure out what to do with it but um, I'm excited to wear it we've got a few gross days coming up weather wise so I might might trial it out then and see if I need to unpick the sleeves in hindsight I maybe should have not trimmed off the sleeves but I I blocked, I pulled them when I blocked them, so hopefully they'll be okay. But I'm not trying it on for you now, because I'm going to smear lipstick around my face, and I'm not down for that, because who would be? But yeah, my love note. Like I say, there's more information in the last podcast, because um, I counted it as a finished object last month. But I just wanted to share it in its full glory, because that time i just redone the neck cast off. So then... We have this beast of a shawl. This is the Be Bold Shawl. This is a pattern by um, Tracy Mustard of What Mustard Made. Made, and then What Mustard Made. And I blocked it quite large. This is crochet, it's a crochet shawl. I really enjoyed the process of it um, once, I, once I got into it. Because you do have to crochet into the chain at the end and that it took me a little bit to to work out that I needed to do that and get the numbers right. But then once I was in, I was in and I couldn't put it down. And I absolutely loved it. So this gorgeous purple colour is from Jawstead Creek. It's called Just What You Need on their Iona base, which is a silk uh, merino blend. Dreamy, gorgeous, drapey, soft. And then this purpley variegated shade is from Kate Celine on the merino Sock. It's 75-25 superwash merino nylon and it's in the February colourway that I bought in 2017 and this was the special magical unicorn skein that I didn't know what to do with it because I put it on a pedestal and made it too special and um, mistakes, that was a mistake, I know for next time but this is a lovely way to use two colours which way around is it? I think it's this way around and I've been, I've worn it, I wore it yesterday, it's, it's a bit of a beast, so either I need to put a knot in this side, which is definitely something one can do to shorten it a little bit, you see, like a little knot, or what I have been doing, it's just been with this end going around once more underneath, and then tucking it under like this, but it's super cosy and I really like it, um, it's nice and drapey, it uses a 5mm crochet hook and two single skeins of yarn but the good thing about the pattern, the good thing that Tracy did is that they wrote in it um, go until you have X amount of grams left as opposed to so many rows so that way if you've just got like scraps I was going to say odds and sods, we're sticking with it if you've got odds and sods in your stash like I do after the love note jumper not quite a full skein, you can make it to your measurement and then yeah, I really like it. I think it's really nice. I think it's really good. And I think it's going to get quite a lot of wear. I kind of want to make another one. I really enjoyed the process. I can't believe how quickly I made it, especially after I made the flat iron shawl last year and it took me a few months. Whereas this, this one took me, what, three weeks, three, four weeks? It was great. I loved it. I really, really enjoyed the process of it. And yeah, I need to do more crochet. So that is the Be Bold shawl. And yeah, I used my hooks from Pedro's Plax and have ordered more from her in three more, three more and three, three more sizes. And because I'm awkward, I've requested that the hook matches the handle because she makes polymer clay handles for hooks and I want them all to match because I am that person. Well, I wouldn't have minded had the first one not matched. If the first one hadn't matched, I wouldn't have thought anything of it, but it does, so I think about it. Socks. We're talking socks. You ready to chat socks? I'm going to have a swig of tea to prepare myself that we're chatting socks. I'll start with the ones that are currently on the blockers 
they're not blocking. I was just showing them off in a Patreon vlog. These are a lovely squishy pair of socks that are going to be a gift for a friend. This is Chromatic Yarns. It is, I have an MCN base, I just had some random skeins of merino cashmere nylon in the dye shed and I was like, I'm dyeing them up, it's happening, so I've got another skein over there. Uh, this is Hummingbrella Mushroom colorway and I've held it together with Spirit Guardians and on fluffy lace, sorry, that wasn't very specific, to create this lovely, squishy, fluffy pair of socks. They're so... Oh, I love them. So uh, one of my friends that I knit a pair of socks for last year, she said that she wears them more like comfy, cozy slipper socks. So I was like, mm, I will knit you some fuzzy socks. I haven't told her this. She doesn't know this. I need to see them soon um, because there's two pairs. And so, yes, I followed the Crazy Sock Ladies DK Vanilla Sock Pattern uh, for numbers of everything. I did a heel flap and gusset because I'm apparently back in that game right now but that's okay I will go back to my new depths heel at some point and then I think this is technically the blueberry waffle stitch pattern it's uh, knit two rounds then you knit two purl two for two rounds knit two rounds knit two purl two you know the gem and then it's an umbrella toe but I had misread it initially and so I was doing it as a wedge toe so my stitches are facing the wrong way but the second one that I did the second pair it's better but I needed to make these match but yeah, this is what this looks like. So Spirit Guardians is like a really light pink. Um, it's, a, it's, a light, it's a light pink skein with some speckles of like charcoal grey and a bit of mauve in it. And then Hummingbrella Mushroom is un, an undyed base with a bit of a peachy colour, pinks, purples, turquoise. And so yeah, that's how they look held together and then so I knit both of these and then I went to see my parent and was like I need I have another friend who I want to knit some socks off for their birthday and I had just enough yarn just enough yarn. I played such yarn chicken it was a little stressful um, but I might have these set on the sock lockers for a little bit but so this is a matching pair with the rest of it I had 47 grams left in the merino cashmere nylon and then I had 22 grams left in the um, fluff and then by the time I finished one of the socks it had used exactly half of everything that I had left but the scales that I'd used don't measure in decimals so they round it up so I was it was it was touch and go but I managed to do it I had a tiny ball at the end of each and so yeah I just threw it in the bin it was great but these are the matching pair so this one has a 50 stick, 56 stitch count round um, and I used 3.5 millimeter needles oh, I put them away they're not in there oh I've lost the backing of a pin what pin is it well if I've lost the backing I've likely lost the front how sad I'll have to have a look for it and see if it's around, but it might have fallen off. It might be in a bag, it might be in the car. Oh, it's my Fibre Fox pin! Oh, that is sad, actually. You see, this is why I sell stitch markers with locking bags, because then they don't fall off as easily. Oh, how sad. How sad. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and this one is a 48 stitch sock. I did the toe properly with the six stitches facing the right way this time, yes they are, and um, I knit these socks in two days, both of them, for the pair, two days for the pair, madness. So I, we drove down to my parents on Thursday and I cast on a pair in the car, I finished them, we had a five hour drive down to my parents because the rain was horrendous and the traffic was awful. And I finished them on Friday when we were driving around the New Forest, which was lovely. Uh, finished the first one, and then I cast on the second one on that day as well, uh, because all I had to do was the toe for the first one, because I'd knit so much. And then I finished this one in that evening on the Friday. So in a day and a half, I knit two socks. That's why I like a DK weight sock. They're so good. 
I need to knit more DK weight socks, but yes, I'm hoping that my friends like them. This one is a little shorter in the foot because my friend has slightly smaller feet, but I, so I really hope that they work for them and they like them and I think they won't be too much of a faff to clean because they can be machine washed, just don't wash them on high and preferably hand wash, but you know, they're woolen socks, they don't need to be washed that often. But yeah, I've got two pairs of socks out of a ball of yarn. Uh, well, technically two balls of yarn and they are the most luxurious socks I've ever knit because they have cashmere in and mohair and silk. So they might be the most expensive pair of socks I've ever knit. They might be the most expensive pair of socks that my friends have ever or will ever own. I don't know. I'm not one for generally buying luxurious socks. But, hey, when you're a yarn dyer, there's perks to the job. And also, I really want to make myself a pair of fuzzy socks now. So I might have a dig through. And um, using the leftover yarn from my love note, I could knit myself a really nice fuzzy pair of socks as nice slipper socks, because I think that'll be great. I have a feeling I've knit one of these slightly tighter than the other. Oh no, they're the same length, we're all good, we're all good. Calm it down. Right, next up, we're still finished. We are still on finished, finished things. I finished my neon steps. I said that I had another um, skein of it, but I didn't because I've caked it up. I, caked, I don't know where the first ball is, but it will be somewhere. I think I'm worried that I've put the heel in the wrong place on these. I think I've made them a bit short. I think they'll be fine, they'll fit. But I measured, tried to measure it against a sock that fits me really well, but I don't think that was necessarily, oh, I don't know. I don't think it was necessarily a smart move, but that's okay. So these were my cinema knitting for a while. If you watch my demonstrating how long a film is by how much knitting I got done so during said film, uh, sh short form content on various social media platforms. I was knitting this sock when we went to go and see Avatar and also Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania maybe. And uh, I have finally cut the heels in. So this yarn is by The Yarn Badger. It is called Neon Steps. It's on a sparkle sock base. I've forgotten what it's called. Um, it's up over there. But it's got Stellina in, so it's a nice bit of sparkle. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Trust me. Oh, you can see it a bit here in the heel. It's sparkly. Trust me. Yeah. It, it came as 250 gram balls, which I quite like. And it came with a mini skein. So I did a contrasting cuff and heel. Where in the toe I just left as normal. And the afterthought heel that I did is Kirby Werby's afterthought heel which is a pattern here on YouTube where you pick up the stitches and you cut your yarn and you unravel it by the, mind, the last two stitches and then you just knit the heel. The difference that I personally make, I've got quite a high instep or arch and in my foot and it means that the fabric here pulls quite a lot on the heel so how I counter this is I knit plain round four or five times. I think I did four for these. Uh, I knit round four times straight before I start decreasing. And then, yeah. I didn't do a very good, neat job on my grafting, I won't lie. I never do. I pull it too tight and then it looks uneven. It's fine. But yeah, I'm absolutely loving these. My sock drawer is going to have such a makeover. I need to get all my socks out because there are some socks in there that are from that from when I first started knitting and first started knitting socks and I was pulling my yarn so tightly, so tightly that they're a bit tight. It's before I, I learnt not to do that. It's all right, right, pop these in the, pop this in the scrap and then that's an empty bag, lovely. You see, I kept all my project bags in a bag. It was very organized and then it stopped being organised because I stopped putting them back in there. That's 100% my bed. In case you can't tell, I exist in mild chaos. Mild chaos. Right, I have another pair of socks to show you. I know. This is the last finished object. Isn't it? Oh yeah, that's they're an abandoned whip. Uh, so, I suppose I'll get these out to you. All these scraps. And then this one can go away as well. 
Lovely. This was li living in my the little grey girl donut project bag. Wonderful. So, uh, this was my next demonstrating how long a film was by how much knitting I got done during said film. I put the heels a little bit higher up on these ones, which is good. But I finished the toe. And um, I put the heel in on Bank Holiday Monday because I wanted to play The Sims all day, but my computer wouldn't load up the EA app. And then all Mario did was restart the router. Well, no, he did a load of stuff before that. And then he said, did you restart the router by any chance? And I said, well, no, why do I need to? I needed to restart the router. So that's my bad. Anyway, we know for next time. These are donezo. Ta -da -ta -da, ta -da -ta -ta -da. Beautiful, beautiful. This yarn is Giddy Yarns in the Angelina colorway. It's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. This was a sock duo. It was a 50 gram ball uh, of the stripes with a 20 gram ball of the purple. I once again did cuff and heel like the other one. And they're beautiful. They're absolutely stunning. I'm just, oh, <laughs> so proud. Chuffed, chuffed to bits. <gasps> My nails match. Beautiful, uh, sorry. Um, this yarn is absolutely gorgeous. <sighs> I have so much admiration for self-striping dyers because it's not something I do and can be bothered to do. And I like that when people offer the 50 grams because it makes it a little bit cheaper for me and um, it's kind of the perfect amount. This is all I had left of the um, self-striping ball. That's it. And then I had that much left for my heel. And I could have got toes out of these, no problem. And yeah, so I'm obsessed with these completely. And I'm excited to add them to my um, sock drawer. But yeah, I really need to get all my socks out and sort them out and start organising them because I can't just keep knitting myself socks and adding to them. I mean, I'm sure I can. Pop that in there, swig a tea, and then we'll briefly chat about works in progress because there's not that many of them. Oh, I love that tea so much. In fact, there's only two works in progress and that's because I've recently finished loads of things. So I went, like I said, went down to see my parents this past weekend and I took these socks down to knit the heels on. I took these socks down to knit one heel on because I'd already done one. And I took these socks down uh, in before I'd even cast them on. I know, right? Uh, I managed to get all that done. <laughs> and so, yeah, I was just like, oh, I finished loads of stuff. And now I haven't actually started that much stuff again. But while we're chatting socks, we'll chat more socks. I have a half object, which means I need my sock blockers back, please. Thank you, at least one, because I have a half object. Uh, a half object, for those who do not know the lingo, is a sock that is half finished, um, as in, a pair of socks that's half finished. I've finished one sock, other than I haven't woven in the ends. This is a test knit for uh, the lovely Becky Mundy, who has a YouTube channel called Becky Knits, I believe. And well, the Instagram's called Becky Knits. I'm just going to very quickly double check when this pattern comes out. So I've just heard back from Becky. These are out on hopefully Monday, fingers crossed. Uh, I have test knit this for them. These are the bookshelf socks. Like I say, I've not woven the ends and I'm sorry. Uh, and it's a really fun and enjoyable pattern. I shamelessly copied Alison of Lofty Loops, if you watched her latest podcast, and put a stripe in the top of my sock because I thought it looked really cute. Hindsight, I wish I'd done two stripes. I wish I'd done another stripe underneath, but that's okay, we know for next time. And um, so the contrast is just chromatic yarns, just some scraps. I had a turquoise moose game left over from doing sock sets for a yarn show. And then this pink is Sugar Plum Fay, uh, which I have left over from, oh, I knit a shawl ages ago. Um, and then the main bad boy of this yarn is Spectrum Fiber. If you watched my Vlogmas video where I'm going through my stash, I got this out and was like, I think I'm going to get rid of it. Glad I didn't. This is the Neverland colorway. It's on her twisted sock base. It's 80-20, 80% merino, 20% nylon. 
and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous colourway that's kind of yarn barfed a little bit now because I pull from the middle all the time. I love a middle pull, I love a centre pull. Um, but yeah, this is gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. And I want to know how people achieve like a pastel neon. I want to know what dye they use. I know, technically you just use the, the neon, but I want to know what brand of dye people use, I'm nosy. Uh, also, I've got a great idea for a really nice colourway and I just don't know. <laughs> Where to get the dye from but yeah so this is the first sock it's gorgeous pattern sock um, but it's really easy to memorize really easy to do it's a short pattern repeat which I very much enjoy um, because then it's easy to remember it's easy to pick up it's easy to put down I can tell where I am very quickly lovely I knit this first sock very quickly like I say I am test knitting it for them and then I had all those other socks to do and so this is, I cast on a cuff on the train to Brighton, but by, by the time I was on the train on the way back, it was really busy. And I was kind of like, sat like this next to Marion, I didn't want to be knitting. And I was really tired and didn't want to be making mistakes. Still need to send my feedback to Becky, actually. I will do that after this. But yes, absolutely love this pattern. Highly recommend. And yeah, all being well, they said, all being well, it'll be out on Monday. So if it's something that you would like to knit, Keep an eye out for that. Um, details will be linked in the description note. Not the description, in the podcast notes. Podcast notes. But yeah, I really enjoyed this pattern. It's very, um, what's the word? You know when you just want to keep Moorish? I don't know. It's so the one where, where you you finish your repeat, you're just like, oh, I'll just do another one. Oh, I'll just do another one. Oh, I'll just do another one. And then all of a sudden the leg's done. And I'm like, oh. Um, and yeah, a heel flap and gusset. It's a classic. And then it's another umbrella toe. I know! Because I'm test knitting the pattern, I had to follow the pattern exactly. And I mean, I don't have an issue with an umbrella toe. It's just not the toe I usually, I always do a wedge toe. So I've not worn it yet, so I don't know how comfortable it is for me. But I know that a lot of people love them. So I'm very open-minded to changing my toes. I crafted the toe. They did say in the pattern that you could sort of just pull it like a top of a hat, but I don't know how. I would feel about that so I did graft the toe standard and actually I did quite a neat job on this one and yeah I used the contrast for the heel and the cuff and the toe and gorgeousness gorgeousness so now I just need to start the leg of the next one I might do that this evening who knows because I have a new cast on I cast something new on I know you might notice you won't notice some yarn has gone from the jumper section of my stash I cast on the Effervescent Pullover Jumper. I don't know, it's just called Effervescent. It's by Amy Scher. 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 It's in issue 40 of Pom Pom from spring last year. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. It's this lovely lace, lace work jumper. And I'm not going to knit the fluffle because as much as I love the fluffle on other people, I don't think I will wear it enough to put the fluffle on it. I know I will wear it more if I don't put the fluffle on it. However, if I did decide to put the fluffle on it, I do have a skein of a very dark aubergine that I dyed when I was trying really hard to get a nice deep color I love it, I love this colour so much. Uh, but I mean, it was one skein in a pan and I just kind of left it there for ages. So I don't know if it's something I'm gonna be able to recreate, but it's a gorgeous deep colour and I just wanted to challenge myself. But that would go very nicely with it, which leads me to, this is where I'm at. It's not very exciting. <laughs> so this is Pigment and Ply. This is in Escalor the Leshy colourway from uh, the Witch Collection last year. And it's beautiful. I bought this at Yarndale as a birthday present to myself. Knew that it was going to be a jumper. Um, I have three of them. Beep, beep, beep. And it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Looks like a high twist base. And yeah, it's stunning. Stunning. I'm a little concerned that the lace isn't going to show up in this colour. But also... I'm kind of all right with that if you just kind of have to look at it for a bit. I have cast it on. It's it's a weird construction. I've kind of skimmed ahead as you should do when you start a new pattern. Not everyone does. I definitely don't all the time. 
and um, it's bottom up which is fine I had to cast on 266 stitches and then join them in the round not twisting them success managed to successfully do that whilst watching uh, burlesque that's inside out whilst watching burlesque and now I'm doing half twisted rib for eternity before I switch to the needle for the body and I've got cat hair on this because of course I do because everything is always covered in cat hair at the moment because they're molting um I've got a little my little sheep from flame knits on there that I got at East Anglia Yarn Festival and then this yarn is just knitting up so beautifully I am currently alternating skeins um as one should do when using hand dyed yarn just to avoid any pooling so yeah I'm just dropping one and picking it up the other at the end of the row people in the last podcast asked me what I did instead of just dropping one and picking up the next skein dropping one that sounds unpleasant uh instead of dropping one strand and picking up the next strand I did helical knitting which is where you slide three needles or you, you stop three stitches before your next strand and you slide them onto the next needle and you continue knitting round. that's what I would do um but yeah pick, dropping dropping one strand and picking up the other strand whilst not pulling it too tight actually works really well so it's likely what I'm going to continue doing um because I think it makes sense especially with lace work but yeah it's weird you knit from the bottom up to the armpits and then you start knitting the sleeves and you join it on and you knit the sleeve and you join it on and then you knit the yoke and I've not ever knit a jumper like that before I've knit, a I've knit a bottom up jumper before but um, you knit it then you split the front and the back which I'm guessing you have to do here too you've split the front and the back and then I would continue to knit up and then did a three needle cast off on the shoulders and then picked up um, arm stitches and knit down but these ones you knit the arms it's weird it's a weird construction and I'm excited to try something a little different and I'm knitting from stash so win 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 um but yeah it's in very early stages i only cast this on two days ago so um it's very baby stages but that's okay i knit a fair amount whilst editing the patreon vlog this morning so i'll likely get a bit more done whilst editing this podcast either this evening or tomorrow morning we'll see because today is wednesday because i'm trying to get ahead of things a little bit more because if I get ahead of things then and I have a busy week it won't matter so much and I, then I hopefully won't miss posting video because I hate doing that it's frustrating anyway uh, yeah so that is my new cast on that I have and I'm very excited for it to do its thing or for me to make it do its thing you know what I'm saying that is living in my project bag that um, Becky of Soprano it's made for me it's cats and sushi I love it I have an acquisition I have an acquisition you might have seen this I posted about it on my short form content um I first off I purchased um two sweaters quantities from Selena of Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co in her latest collection because I feel like it her colorway choices except for a few um, were a personal attack on my bank account um, because I feel like she looked at them and thought Hannah will buy these I will dye these it, it felt like a personalized collection for me so I've bought two sweaters quantities because apparently that's what I do now uh, one of them is going to become a trilogy sweater because I already have a trilogy sweater and I love that one you hold it together with mohair and I just think oh, it's gonna be nice and then the other one I have a couple of different options so I've bought enough so I have space for the options anyway so um before I went to East Anglia Yarn Festival I bought these did I need them no very much not but I bought them and that's fine these are from Wool and Works who is Chloe all the way over in Australia oh glorious right let me shift my seating position this is on her finger fingering merino base it's 100% superwash merino and it is in the fairy bread colorway and I love it I love it I feel like I've talked about this did I talk about this in the podcast last time when did this arrive nope I didn't uh so fairy bread is white bread that's buttered and has hundreds and thousands sprinkled on or 
what else they got? Just sprinkles, like sugar sprinkles. That usually the little balls. Um, hundreds and thousands for us are the sugar strands, but yeah, I'm saying hundreds and thousands sprinkled on. And one, I love the name. Two, I adore the colour. And three, I think this is going to be a really fun jumper. So I might hold some undyed mohair with it and just have it do its thing and have a nice time. Or, depending how the effervescent goes, this would be a fabulous effervescent. It would be so good. So we'll see how the knit goes, you know. But I just think this in a jumper will be absolutely glorious and I have been umming and ahhing about it for a long time and then finally bit the bullet and did it and oh, Chloe is such a talented dyer. I will say the flaw is that postage is expensive. So, um, and also customs, we do not have a nice customs deal with Australia. So those two things are quite annoying, but ultimately for me, it's worth it because this yarn is gorgeous and it's going to be a fabulous jumper, you know? Mm. It's, it's one of those things, but yeah, right, I should put this back up. Oh. Anyway, so that is everything I think I have to share with you in regards to everything I've been working on. We're going to ch chat shop news very briefly and then, um, yeah. So, thank you so much to everyone who supported my last shop update last week. The week before last, two weeks ago. I, I am absolutely blown away at the reception to the shop update. I understand that I hadn't had one in a really, 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 really long time, maybe since like October last year. And a lot of them were new colourways, which is very exciting. Or club colourways that hadn't been in rotation before, that kind of thing. And so um, if people wanted it, they bought it. And I'm genuinely in shock at um, the reception. So thank you so much, so much. So I am having to adjust to how, not having to, but I am adjusting how I do my business in that I have been, for the last, last year, I was just spent the whole time prepping for shop update, uh, no, yarn shows. And then I stuck everything in the shop after the yarn show and then was like, cool time to prep for the next yarn show but I'm not having I'm not doing yarn shows um anymore as far as I know I don't know I might do East Anglia Yarn Fest well if they'll have me back I don't know I'm not doing any more yarn shows this year that's for certain so I uh need to adjust how I'm doing things obviously so hopefully you'll get some more frequent shop updates but they might be a bit smaller than the one we've just had obviously I want to be where I want to start working on a new collection so I need to start looking for inspiration pictures for that and I think a new collection would be really really fun to do maybe in the summer maybe in September I could or I need to work on something for my business's 10th birthday which is coming up in October maybe I'll do something for then instead but first off advents are coming up so there will not be a shop update this month because this month we have advents at the moment the Nitticroll Yarn Club is live and we'll be live until Sunday and then I'll take it out the shop and then dye it off, I'll ship it off. And then the uh, advents go live Saturday next week on the 13th of May. I have a limited limit as to how many are going there are going to be because I am a one woman show. There's a limit to how many minis I can floof and how much I can dye. They are, um, it's called a book of spells advent calendar all of the colorways are going to be inspired by spells in Dungeons and Dragons um it's not going to be a traditional fade but it, they are the colors are going to be put together next to each other with somewhat of a purpose so it might come out slightly gradient but it's not going to be an intentionally dyed fade if that makes sense and so um the the, the kind of color story I'm going with are dual tones not dual jewel uh, like rich teals um, deep reds goldeny colors opulence fabulousness that kind of thing which is a little bit of a step away from the neons and such that I tend to do uh, but I'm also really excited for one the challenge and two the change of pace so I only have a limit as to how many I can do of those I will say I did a a poll on Instagram on who is planning on buying the advent and um, 
89 res people responded that yes, they were going to buy it and I currently have the limit in my mind of 90. So depending how quickly they go, I might change it, but I also might not. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, this afternoon I am going to be working on the stitch marker that I want to do for um, sort of four sock sets and then one will come with a stitch marker so I just need to work on the design for that. That will also be follow a similar colour story to the Book of Spells and yeah so it, the idea is to open one on each Sunday of Advent but obviously you can open them whenever you want, knit them whenever you want, they don't have to be used for socks. But yeah I just thought it would be fun to offer that as an option as well but I really need to make the stitch marker but what with the shop update and the packaging and then going to sound to see my parents and then and then and then and then so uh yeah that's this afternoon because then I can finally price them up and um chat about that and advertise that but that is all happening on the 13th of May and it's coming up very quickly and I'm a little bit nervous it's weird because <laughs> I feel like I've missed the boat because everyone's already done their advents, they're already ordering all of their yarn and they've already and they've already. But I feel like I've missed the boat, even though it's only May, I definitely haven't missed the boat. Um, but yeah, if you've got any advent questions, feel free to ask them. I could do a little short little video talking about all the, all the thing, all things advent if you want and post it up like Wednesday next week or whatever. Um, that is definitely an option. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them or message me on Instagram or whatever but yeah so that I think is everything for shop news and then I think I'm going to be working on a shop update for June um, stitch markers and yarn so yeah that's that that's okay I got an accountant now I'm excited to not do my own bookkeeping and hopefully she saves me some money I mean she's costing me money but hopefully on my taxes she saves me some money fingers crossed Oh, it's a scary and nerve-wracking time. Anyway, uh, in regards to life stuff, what's been happening? Not a whole lot. Oh, that's not true. I went to Georgie and Ben's wedding of the Fibre Fox. Had an amazing time. Definitely drank a little bit too much, but had a great time. Um, seeing various Yarny friends, chatting with them. Seeing the in-laws, seeing my parents. Played a fair amount of D&D. &D. The sun is starting to come out it's starting to doing its thing and then it's going to be raining for the rest of the week so I don't really know what to think about anything anymore and yeah other than that that is that just that life standard life stuff you know we finished watching the Mandalorian we need to start Marvelous Mrs. Maisel because I love that and want to dress like her every single day I don't have enough stuff in my wardrobe to dress like her every single day. But we've gone with a starry dress today, so we're doing a bit of something. And yeah, that's basically, basically it. We've had a few cinema trips. And it's just generally been quite a chill but fun time. I've knit loads of socks. <laughs> that's it. The cats are fine. Uh, they're enjoying the sunshine. They're following it around the house, sunbathing and whatnot. Baking themselves in the conservatory. It's actually quite funny. But yeah. That's basically pretty much everything, I think. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed chatting with me for the last pff, too long. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you'd like to follow me on social media, links can all be found in the description box or below, along with anything else that I think you might need, like the podcast notes and things like that. If you enjoyed my personality and you enjoyed watching this video and you're not already, please subscribe. It would be delightful to have you stick around. Uh, but if you didn't like it, I'm impressed that you managed to stay till the end and feel free to just move on. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up or thumbs down, depending how you feel. Leave me a comment down below. What have you been up to? What projects are you working on? Have you finished anything recently? Have you bought any new yarn recently? What is your current next cast on? Or, you know, let me know. It's a community. We have a lovely time. And with all that being said, I think that's everything. Probably, hopefully, good. <laughs> I will see you very soon in my next video. If I get some questions about Advents, it will be about that. If I don't, it will be about something else. I have plans. And yes, thank you so much for being here and for being so lovely. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Like I've just said, I'm repeating myself. Bye. <laughs>